Alright, so welcome back everybody. So for this video, I'm going to show you guys how to play Ecos the First Continent. Now this is a very enjoyable game, it's very fun, and it's not extremely hard. So it shouldn't take too long to explain basically the basics of how you play this game. So let's get started, shall we? Let's, let's show you what we have here. So... One thing you'll start with is every player is going to start with uh, seven action cubes. And so these are the action cubes, and there's seven of them. Every player will start with one of them. Another thing every player will start with is they'll start with a dial, and they'll start with a dial that has a particular color. So if they're playing with the orange uh, cube, wooden cube, then they're going to get the orange dial. Now, the colored cubes are actually going to be for the scoreboard, which you can't actually see, but there's a scoreboard up there that you can't see. And my orange uh, cube is up there, ready to score points. Okay, so that's what they'll be used for, just, just keeping track of your points. But anyways, that's what you'll start with. Now, it is recommended when you play Ecos the First Continent, especially if it's your first time, that you should play with uh, one of the recommended starting sets. And uh, there's quite a few of them, and there's, uh, there's the elephant footprint, which is what this is, actually. This is the elephant footprint here. There's also the rhino footprint, the gorilla, the antelope footprint, um, the stork footprint, um, the rhino footprint. So there's a lot of different footprints to start with. You can have up to six players play this game. So there's quite a few footprints to choose from, and it's obviously recommended that you separate all of the footprints if you're playing with the footprints, which have these little footprints in the left corner of the card. So if it's got a footprint on it, it's going to be right here in the left side of the card, and you will put them into their own separate little piles of cards, okay? And then each player will pick one of these sets. You'll mix up... Uh, Obviously, you won't necessarily know which pile is which footprint yourself. If you're doing it, you shouldn't you shouldn't look because you want it to be randomized of which footprint you start with. And so this is uh, the elephant footprint, but you could start with just about any footprint. Then after you have every every player has picked a set of cards face down like this pile here. They will uh, look through their cards and they will notice that some of these cards with the footprint will have a darker uh, footprint on them. See, this one is light and this one is dark. This one is dark and this one is dark as well. And so the ones that are dark, you'll actually start with first. And so I've already done that. I've already separated these darker footprints uh, away from the lighter footprints and I've already set them up and placed them here on the table and so that's what you'll do and so there's approximately three of them and so that's uh, what's going to happen now some of the players their footprints they might have this red banner on them even if that's the case they might have the red banner on them but they also might be dark which is good that's fine some so some players will get the red ones to start with while other players We'll just get green. So that's possible too. What's the big difference between the green ones and the red ones? Well, the green ones, they have more leaves on them. You'll notice this one has four leaves. And I'll show you up close. See, there's four leaves on this green one. This red one here only has two leaves. That means that's the amount of times it can be ecosed or played, if you will. That's how many times it can be played, is just two times, versus the green ones, which can be played a lot more. But of course, not all of the green ones can be played four times. This is a green one, and you'll notice it has three leaves. So it can be played three times. And some of the red ones actually only have one leaf on them. That means they can only be played once, or echoed once. Okay, so that's basically what that means. Now, so I've already got the three starting cards, as if I was playing the game already. I've already got the uh, elephant footprint already in the game. And this is sort of like a basic uh, uh, setup of, of, of the continent already started. And that's already been set up right. And so basically the first thing you're going to do is you're going to pick a player to be 
uh, the Harbinger. Maybe uh, you can pick the player who went on the most recent hike, and they can be the uh, Harbinger. But regardless, somebody is going to start off being the Harbinger here, and they're going to get to hold on to this really cool bag. And on what they're going to do with the bag is this is a si simultaneous play game, so they're going to take a random element stone from the bag, they're going to take it out, and they're going to reveal it to everybody at the same time. And this one is the water element. So they're going to place it down so that way everyone knows it's water. And everyone at the same time, including the Harbinger, is going to look for a uh, square here that has the water uh, element on it. And so, for instance, I have only one card here that has the water element on it. And so, therefore, I can place this cube right here onto that little spot, covering it up nicely. That's what you're going to do with those action cubes. You're going to use them to cover up these squares here. And once they're completely covered, you'll call out Ecos. So that's what will happen. Now, if you don't have a that particular element out, so let's say this was drawn again, and as you can see, I do not have any more water symbols. I have the sun symbols, I have a grass symbol on this one, I just have sun symbols on this one. There's a branch symbol, a grass symbol, and then this one is like a pebble symbol. So I don't have any more water symbols. So if this one was drawn again from the bag, which is possible because you'll look here on your dial here, and it will tell you how many approximately max there can be of any particular element here in the bag. And so there are eight of those water stones, uh, water element stones in the bag. So it's quite possible the Harbinger could easily pick the exact same one once again, and then what would you do? Well, if that's the case, if you can't place a cube, you can rotate your dial clockwise. And so obviously you'll, it'll start in this direction, with the start on your dial, obviously just like that. But then you'll rotate it when you get to rotate it when you can't place a cube. Maybe uh, multiple players won't be able to place their cubes, and so there'll be probably some players rotating their dial. Now, you do not have to place the cube at any given time. You do not have to place it down. You can instead, if you want, you can instead rotate the dial. So that's what you can do with the dial. You don't have to place the cubes if you don't want to. But you definitely want to place the cubes when you can, because a lot of these will help you build the continent as well as score some points. You are not going to score any points rotating your dial. You're not going to do that. It's never going to happen. So you don't want to spend the entire game just rotating the dial. So you will strategically rotate the dial when you need to, but you'll only usually want to rotate this dial when you don't have any other choice because there's nothing you can place. Now, obviously, you only have seven cubes to start out with, and once they're all being utilized, then, well, let's just say, for instance, I had this cube here and here and here, and then these four were also being utilized, okay? Well, actually, let's just say that I didn't have seven. Let's just say that this is all I had for cubes. All right? So let's just say all of my cubes are being used for cards. I don't have any more cubes. Don't, don't, uh, don't, just, let's just pretend I don't have this one. And uh, the Harbinger takes out an element stone from the bag, and they place it on the table. And it's the wave symbol. And you'll know that from earlier, I do have a wave symbol right here, and it's not covered right now. But unfortunately, I have no more cubes available. Does that mean that I've missed my chance? That I can't place a cube on this water symbol, finishing this card and activating this card? No, that's not what that means. It does mean, however, that if I can, I would like to get more cubes, obviously. And there are ways you can get more cubes. But, in the meantime, if you can't get more cubes or don't have more cubes available, you can actually take a cube off of another card you have 
and then place it on the one that was uh, for this particular stone here. So I could take this cube that I just took off, off of this one, and then place it on this one here. That is definitely a good thing to do, especially if it can help you ecos a card. And then obviously I would call out ecos. I would make sure everyone knows that I am eco, I have just activated this card, or I'm going to activate this card. Now, this is a simultaneous game, so there might be other players, let's say there was a player up here, and they also eco a card, maybe let's just say, pretend that this card over here is another player's, okay? And so we have two cards here, two separate players, that have both eco on their turn, right? Well, when that happens, it's the Harbinger who will go first. If the Harbinger is one of the players that ecos that get, they'll get to activate theirs first. So that's another benefit is, uh, for being the Harbinger. It gives you a basically a better chance of getting to act it gives you a better chance of playing your cards because you'll get to play yours first. Sometimes you'll ecos a card and then the other player won't be able to ecos their card afterwards. Let's say this player ecos their card and it allowed them to place out some animals, okay? When you place an animal here on these tiles, okay, they have to be obviously placed in certain spots. Uh, this is an antelope here, so they can go on the grass and they can go um, also in the desert as well. The stork here can only go in the grass. The uh, rhino, oh sorry, this is a hippo. The hippo here can go on both water and it can also go in uh, grass as well. And then the, uh, um, actually no, the antelope can only go in grass, but the elephant can go in desert and grassland. But let's just say the they ecosed their card here and there was already a hippo in this water here. So this is a hippo I just placed. And let's say there was already a fish in the water here, like so. Um, let's say there was a stork over here and an elephant here, okay? And let's just say the player over here, let's just say this was the card that allowed a player to place an animal and they placed the elephant right here. Now you'll notice that all four of these terrain tiles here have an animal on them. And so when you place an animal, you can't place an animal on a tile that already has an animal unless a card says otherwise. If that's the case, then that would be the case. But that isn't the case with this one here. This one, in order to ecos this card, they would first have to be able to place an animal down. You see this little red arrow here? It means they have to be able to do this particular function of this Ecos card, to activate this card. That means they can't get this, which is victory points, unless they can do one of these. And obviously, if this player had placed an animal down and it prevented this player from placing an animal, they wouldn't be able to Ecos, obviously. And so if that was the case, they would remove the the uh, cube that they just placed on the card, they would remove it and rotate their dial instead. So that is at least somewhat of a consolation to that fact. But that's why you definitely will want to be the Harbinger. You're not just going to want to be the Harbinger so you can take out stones in the bag, which is pretty fun, right? But you're also going to want to be the Harbinger so you have first say when it comes to eco-senior cards if other players also echoes as well.